Do you know that decision making is an act of murder? Y'all didn't know that? Every time you make a decision, something dies. The etymology of the word decide means to kill off. If you look at the word side, we see it in a lot of things that have to do with death, homicide, suicide, genocide, and so on. When we decide to do something, we put one of our options to death. That means that it no longer exists. In this video, I'm gonna help you help yourself make some decisions, how to essentially kill it at decision-making. And that's going to start right now. I got nothing for Bob today. He's so difficult to work with. You know what? Just, just go to the video. Just, just go. Just go. We got nothing. Nothing today. Give him a break. Move along. Get going. Get out of here. What's up, y'all? This is your boy 210. If you're coming across my channel for the very first time, consider subscribing and hitting that alert button so that you know when my next video comes out. And for your entertainment, I just so happened to put that alert button on his face. Swing away. If you're coming back, thank you so much. Cause like I say in every video, and I mean it honestly, there is no channel without you. Decisions are going to have to be made. It is a part of our life. I have to decide every day if I want to see this mean mug every time I walk in here. And guess what? Every day I say yes. You know why? Because he's my friend. He's my buddy. He's my buddy. And I even know when my buddy's missing something, like his headphones. That's why I got him a new pair, because the other ones were broke. See? Decision made. Make them every day and some of them are really simple decisions and some of them are not so simple. There are different types of decision making. Not all decisions are created the same. Some have a community effect. Others have a personal effect. But we can't treat our small little decision on what sneakers we're gonna wear today like it's going to determine whether the world functions or not. Let's be real about this, y'all. But decisions have to be made. What happens when we normally make decisions is that we get into a comparison game. We compare ourselves to other people, especially on decisions that are a little bit more crucial. For some of you, what school you're gonna go to, what major you're gonna be a part of, whether you're gonna take a specific job across seas or stay domestic, whether you're gonna marry a specific individual or not, whether you wanna continue dating an individual, these things are all part of like the wide spectrum of decisions that you're gonna make throughout your life. What better starting point than right now? If you're on YouTube and you're looking around and you're thinking to yourself, I don't think I've ever made a crucial decision. Well, number one, what? And number two, this video's for you. When we play the comparison games when making a decision, we end up falling in a very dangerous trap. And the trap is that maybe the decision that we make is skewed a little bit. It's not really organic to who we are and what we need. Maybe it doesn't even fit our value system. Why? Because we made a decision compared on what you thought someone else would want, or you made a decision based on you being competitive with an individual. And either way, it doesn't necessarily line up for you specifically. Here, perfect example. When I decide that I'm gonna do a workout, I can do one of two things. I can decide that I can do a workout that I enjoy, or I can decide to do a workout in which other people who are watching me work out will think that I enjoy, but it's really just to one up them. Well, when I decide, I have to make a crucial decision. Am I doing this for me or am I doing it for everyone else? Because if I'm doing it for everyone else, I'm gonna do something stupid. Like I'm gonna end up doing a CrossFit workout and I'm gonna break my back. I'm gonna break it completely in half because I don't know how and what they're doing because I don't CrossFit at all. I barely fit. 
I have to make a decision that's based on me. Now, can I up my decision once I make it? Can I up the ante? Absolutely. If I say I'm going to work out like how I'm going to work out, then I'll just work out the way I work out. And then if I want to up it, then I'll up it. But I got to think about my values. Where are my values? Many times we treat decision making, personal decision making, like we do when we're making a business decision. We, we look at what we need to decide and then we get input from the team. Well, depending on who's on your team is depending on what you're going to decide. And some people have opinions about everything. And if it just has to do with you, then maybe it wouldn't be so fitting for you to ask a whole team on what they think. Now, I was enlightened a little bit and told that different personality types are going to take different approaches when it comes to decision making. Like melancholic and caloric, they're all about data. They're data-driven people. They want to see the numbers and say, hey, is this going to work for me? I so happen to be one of those data-seeking people, right? So if I know that a specific thing is going to work out because statistics say so, then chances are I'm probably going to decide to go closer to that. But would it match my value system? I have to ask myself that question. Because if it doesn't, then what's the point? A sanguine or a phlegmatic, they're more people driven. They're either going to want to people please or they want to make sure that their decision isn't going to affect other people. Obviously, it's going to sway them either way. But again, we go back to our value system. If you have a good value system, then we have to make sure that our decision to people please isn't going to affect that. Let's dive in to three tips that you need when decision making. Here are the three tips. Number one, your core values. Identify your core value system. A lot of decisions are always gonna come back to your core values. Not all decisions have to come back to your core values, but most crucial ones will. For instance, what type of sneakers I wear isn't gonna affect what type of Catholic I am. However, how I wear those sneakers and how I act when I wear those sneakers is going to affect my core value systems. So now I need to check and balance that. But identify your core value system. Number two, what's the situation? Identify the situation in which you are going to have to go and make a decision on. Is it something big? Is it something small? If it's something small, treat it small, okay? What are you going to eat today? That's not a big decision. Freeze. Don't make this the reason that you decide you're gonna get off your diet because I said it doesn't matter what you're gonna eat today. Because if it does matter, then make it matter. That goes back to number one, your core value. All right, let's get back. But if it's a big decision, it go back to your core value system, which was number one, and ask yourself, does my decision, what I decide, will it kill off some of my core values? If it does, then maybe I should choose accordingly. Number three, identify your top three. After you identify the situation, actually start going into the decision-making process. It doesn't have to be a complicated thing. Just simply identify three things or maybe even two. It could just be two. Right? And of those top three, say which one matches your core values more. Now, again, this is for one of those crucial decision making. If you're going out and I'm going back to the my sneaker wearing process, right? Then I'm going to say, okay, what are the top three pairs of sneakers that I'm going to wear? Is it them, those, or them? Doesn't matter. As long as I match and still look fly and not look like that guy. <laughs> identify identify and identify and it'll come back to I identify. It's an I think not the team just you you can do it I know you can when making decisions it's hard because you may feel as if you don't make one decision then you're gonna regret that one that you didn't decide on false because you wouldn't even know what it looks like if you decided that other option because it's dead. It doesn't exist. Therefore, it is a fantasy in your mind. There should be no moment of regret because it never existed. But what does exist is the decision that you made currently. 
Be at peace with it. Be okay with it. If it matches your core value system, then go with it. You have to identify what that core value system is. To quote Hamilton, and I think this was Hamilton taken for someone else, but you got, they could take whatever they want from somebody else because that music was banging. If you don't stand for something, then you will eventually fall for everything. I think that's how it goes, but even if it doesn't, I kind of like mine. For real, I should have wrote Hamilton. I'm not gonna lose my shot, but he did. You can't keep running around like a chicken with his head cut off when it comes to just making decisions. Simple decisions, just make them simple. The more crucial decisions, you need to trust that if they match your core value, then you're doing the right thing. Don't live a life of regret. It says this in the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 5, 37. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from the evil. Be at peace with either your yes or your no to a decision making. Because anything in between becomes confusion. And that, that is where Satan dwells in the midst of confusion. To instill you with doubt, with shame, to make you feel as if you're a failure because you didn't choose something else. If you know your core values and you know what you believe in, then our God will have your back in your decision. But you have to have your confidence in our God that he created someone capable of making the most crucial and the most simple decisions. Because at the end of the day, you and I are going to have to make a decision. And it's a simple one if your core values are in place. Be at peace with what decision you make and know that our God, who is the prince of that peace, will be your vindicator. You got this. I believe in you, as does he. God bless you. This is your boy 210, and this was just a moment. But if you don't stand for anything, then you'll never stand. If you don't stand for. If you don't stand for anything, then you will eventually fall for some. How'd that go? If. Bang it! They either want to people pre. We treat decisions like we treat business decisions. You <laughs> see, I have a list, y'all. You can make fun of that. One in here. <coughs> Corona. <coughs> I'm gonna fly one in my mouth.